Cadre. Sunday, July 15th. We are halfway through the month of July now. Can you believe that? So, um, this one could could be a little bit of a longer video, a few things I want to talk about. Um, but I'm also going to do a different shave. Um, this one's not a review, this is just a shave. However, um, yesterday, I think it was yesterday, um, Spider, one of the members, KJ, he posted a thread where he wanted to know what people's elite of elite soaps were. So if you're using something similar to my rating scale, which is the tiered box system, you can go into my journal, you can find it. I'll probably post it in the soap section too, just because people are referencing it across the site. So it'd probably be good as a reference point so people kind of understand what it is that we're referencing. So anyways, what I do is I have tiers. Tier three is box um, eight, nine, 10. Tier two is box seven, six, five. Tier 1 is 432, and then the Elite box is Tier 1. I put them in different tiers, and so Tier 3 means I'm not buying it. This is a soap that I could, with a lot of work, get to ladder. It's not really worth it to me to continue. Um, soap that's there is like Williams, um, new modern Williams. It, but that soap is slick as snot when you get it right. It's just too much of a hassle to worry about for me. Um, tier 2 are soaps that have excellent scent, great performance, but there's just something that doesn't make it Tier 1. It could be residual slickness isn't as good as it could be... A um, bunch of different things. You know, it could be the slickness isn't as great. It could be it takes a little bit more work to lather. Um, it could be anything along those lines. A, a lot of soaps reside in Tier 2 for me. Tier 1 is a soap that it pretty much hits everything. I mean, it's it's great. Um, a lot of, you know, I have some soaps that reside there too. Sterling ends up in there. Um, soap Commander's in there. Different boxes, but they're there. The boxes give you that ability to say, yeah, it's a tier one soap, but you know, this one is still a little bit better than this one, but it's still tier one. Um, Elite is that box where it's like, it hits all the notes. Uh, very few soaps get there for me. Um, one of them that I'm using today does, and I've used it a little bit the last couple days, well, the last couple days, last couple weeks, and it is Beehive. Um, Beehive Soap and Body Care Company is from here in Utah. It's made in Murray, Utah. That probably doesn't mean anything to you guys unless you know geography of Utah. But her website is beehivesoap.com. My biggest complaint about her soap is that these aren't waterproof labels. But what's in here is fantastic. Today I'm using the Bay Rum. While not my favorite scent of hers, it is what I'm using. This is like a very sweet Bay Rum that almost has that sarsaparilla um, drink tone to it, if that makes sense. Like if you're somebody who likes to have a glass of sarsaparilla or um, almost root beerish, but it's not quite root beerish. So I, I say sarsaparilla, but anyways, it's a really good scent. It's a really different take on Bay Rum, but this is a tier one soap. She crams in this thing six ounces. It's way too much soap, in my opinion. Um, I wish soap companies stayed at four ounces or less, honestly, when they give you soap. But that's coming from a guy who at one point had over 300 in his dentist at one time. So the ingredients, just so you guys know, are steric acid, water, coconut oil, shea butter, no, sorry, shea butter fruit. So it's a little bit different stage, I guess. I don't know. Potassium hydroxide, glycerin, sodium hydroxide, castor seed oil, and then the fragrance. This is a good one. This is top notch. Guys, this is one of the soaps that hits all the points for me. Unless I do something stupid to it. But this is one of them. 
So I wanted to, so I grabbed it because I've got this and one more scent still in my little corner back over there where I put the soaps that are on deck. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and apply the bloom water to the face and we're going to move on with the shave. I'm also going to put a little bit in the bowl. Um, I've been watching all the videos that people are doing and i got to be honest, I've been really, Josh has reminded me of his. Oh yeah, you guys see that right there? That is the cut still from that crappy Persona blade that I used the other day on camera. I'm telling you guys, that was a rough shave. So there's a tiny bit left in here. I'm gonna dump that in my Captain's Choice bowl. Um, I kind of, I it's like I started doing it this way, full lathering, and I switched to face lathering because I liked it, you know, but i got to be honest with you, I'm kind of taking me back to when I enjoyed all this bull lathering. It's fun. So, I'm going to do that. I'm also going to be using a razor that used to be my number one razor in my den for a long period of time. And it is the Mule, Mule A, I guess is technically how it's pronounced, R41. Yes, the razor's a beast, but I get excellent shaves from it. It has that Bolzano blade in it that I used yesterday, so this would be shaved too on it. And then I'm going to use a beast of a brush. Now, i got to be honest with you. I hope I don't do this soap a disservice because this brush is a, a pain in the butt to use. But I love the look of it. It is the Razor Rock F400. This thing is huge. It's like 32 milliliters. Look at this. I mean, I can... <laughs> it's huge. All right. So anyways, we'll just... We're going to do it. But guys, trust me, regardless of what happens here, this is a tier one soap for me. And KJ, in his sample, in his prize box that he got from me, one of the things that I made very clear in the thread was is that the winner gets to choose a scent from this company. Since they are close to me, I can go down there and I can pick them up. I can save on shipping that way, and I usually get a little bit of a better discount if you buy it in person. So that's what I did, and he chose a scent. I'll let him be the one that goes through all of that, I believe. He said, according to the tracking number, I think it arrives tomorrow, unless there's been some delays, which happen. Um, so yeah, other things that are coming up on this channel and at the Shaving Cadre over the course of the next um, few days. All right, so we've got a good proto lather going real quick. Let me just get that in there. Um, yeah, it's good stuff. So the label's not waterproof. That's a pain in the butt. I've been thinking about running um, like masking tape over the label just so I can still dunk this down and clean up the soap around the sides when you lather it. I probably should just start adopting with this soap the uh, nurse aid method of scoop. But this is a hard soap, so it's hard to do that. But oh well. Um, anyways, let's get to lathering now talk. So what's coming up, um, I'm about done with the Utah soap, so I've got just a few more left to go. Um, CMH737 is sending me his Aristocrat Razor, his prized possession, I think. Consider it that. It's a beautiful razor. I've never used one. And he reached out to me and he asked me to use it for two reasons. Primarily, to put it up against my timeless racer. He wants to know, adding some water dribbles, he finds the Aristocrat one of his best DE razors. It's his go-to. So he want, he's at this stage where a lot of guys end up getting where when it comes to hardware, you don't really need to buy anything new. But the timeless has been calling to him. So he wants to know, does he need to buy 
a timeless. So he says, if I send it to you, will you do side-by-side -side comparisons? So I'm going to use that. Um, if it, It's supposed to actually be here tomorrow. So if it is, Tuesday I'll use the Aristocrat. Wednesday I'll use the Timeless. Both with new blades on their first use. Um, then on when Thursday, well maybe not Thursday because I want to work early. Um, because I want to record these. So I'll probably do two days of each so that way I can put one of them on camera, each of them, and then I'll switch and do it with um, two days of that going every other day. And then when I get back from my trip, I'll record a video because I'm out of town this coming Friday through Monday. I'll record a video where I do half the face aristocrat, half the face timeless. And I'll do that for a couple days. And then I'm going to just do some other, just like investigating and trying to determine is it worth it? Because if you can get your hands on an aristocrat that is in as good a shape as what Chris Holmes's is with what I see in these pictures, there is no need. To, uh, you're going you're to spend a lot of money, is what I'm trying to say. And his is pristine. I, I don't know the full story of it, but it is pristine. I, I tend to recall if he like found it that way in that good a condition. It's freaking beautiful, guys. So, um, another fun thing that I'm going to decide to do tomorrow. Um, all right, so we'll get ready for pass one is that I started a thread based off of Nurse Dave's first video where I wanted to know what it was would you use on your first shave? And while I've threw away the first badger brush because it shed like crazy of mine, while I piffed the original razor I am going tomorrow, going to record a shave, that is practically my firsts. So I will use a badger brush tomorrow, I'm going to use the one that I got literally like month two into my wet shaving adventure as a gift for Father's Day. I'm going to use Colonel Conk. It's not the same scent, but I am going to use it. I'm going to use a razor that is modeled after the Mercur 34C. And after shave wise, I don't know what I'll use yet. I have, I have some one piece I can't decide. Because I could just use the Lime Sec. Spoiler alert, it's Chrono Clonk Lime. Um, but uh, my first couple aftershaves were pretty much Clubman. So, all right, I'm gonna rinse and get this going. One second, pause, yeah. This soap is just amazing. Just amazing. This brush is hard to handle. It, it's, I purchased it because it's red. <laughs> and uh, I mean, I like red. Red's one of my favorite colors. Red and yellow. And I like bright greens, like lime greens and stuff like that. So I'm still looking for a pretty yellow brush. My wolf whisker that I used the other day on camera was close, but it's not quite bright enough for me. So, I don't know what I did, but not last night, but the night before, I slept wrong in my back. Like, tweaked a muscle or something like that. It's been bugging me. So, anyways, yesterday, since this is a vlog, the wife and I had planned to take the kids to um, Tracy Aviary 
it's um, a small aviary in one of our parks. Think New York Central Park. That's effectively what this is. It's our version of Central Park. Um, so we don't go downtown very often, but the kids always have fun. Well, Connor always has fun. This was Sadie's really first time now that she's older. Um, when we woke up, it was overcast. But the weather was... Temps were nice and cooler. We were in the high 70s. We weren't in the hundreds. So I'm like, well, let's pull up the weather report. No rain. Like, 10, 15% chance. So I'm like, let's do it. What does it matter? Let's just go. Oh yeah, with the Muley Island, I need two passes. I get a BBS. I usually do a little bit of a cleanup, but so I'm like, let's just go. And I don't think, you know, I'm like, they're saying it's not gonna rain and let's just go and enjoy ourselves and it'll be cool so the kids can run around more. And when we got there, a lot of parents didn't make that call. So they must have switched and done something else because it was not crowded at all for a Saturday, which was awesome. So we were able to literally just like let the kids run in front of us, didn't have to worry about crowds or anything like that. See, this is what's so neat about the soap. Pause for a second. Look at this. Yeah, it's so residual slickness. I don't even have to add water to the face to do a cleanup. Don't have to. I can just come in and be like, oh yeah, trouble spot right over here. Get that, touch that up. Okay, that's good. Oh, little, little spot right here, still residual slickness, it's unbelievable. Good there, good there, good there, good there. I'm BBS. Boom, done. So anyways, um, I'll clean up and talk to you guys, I'm doing this a little bit, but. So anyways, what we did is um, we show up, it's still nice and cool, we go in there. The bird show is getting ready to start, so we started at the bird show. I was really happy with Connor because he uh, volunteered during the show to be one of the volunteers. So he goes up and uh, puts his hands down. They put food in them and they, the guy goes like, release the quacken. And these like ducks from South America come flying out and they go down and they start eating out of the kids' hands. Connor thought that was really cool. So that was a, that was a lot of fun. Um, we enjoyed that. About the end of the show, it started to rain a little bit. Not bad, just like little sprinkling. So we continued. We continued walking around, looking at all the birds and doing those different types of things. There was a stretch where it started to rain pretty hard. So they have a really cool um, food area. It's all outside still. And we just went over there and they had a bunch of umbrellas. So we just sat underneath one of the umbrellas. We're out of the rain listened to the rain, and enjoyed the lunch that we packed. So we didn't pay their prices on food. Um, just enjoyed the rain. It was, it was great. Um, it died down, so we finished the last section that we had. And then the one indoor part is the rainforest room. So you go in and they've got all the rainforest birds, the humidity's up real high. Um, but it was neat because actually we were the only ones there pretty much at this time. So we actually took Sadie, my daughter, for 15 months, took her out of the stroller because she's she was a late walker. Connor started like at 10 months old. She started at like a month ago, 14 months. So we took her out of the stroller and just gave her that opportunity to walk around. Oh my gosh, I'm so smooth. And, and the post shave on this soap, guys, is fantastic. So just let her walk around. You know, and she enjoyed that, looking at the birds, and, you know, so it was a great day. But then when we got out, it was raining hard again, so we kind of ran to the car. Oops, dropped something. That scoring paper that I now use. But anyways, so, I, we ran to the car. And so we're leaving a little bit early because there were still some activities we were going to do. Like we were going to, we were going to feed the pelicans. They do with pelican feeding, stuff like that. We didn't do it. So Connor's at this age where he watches TV now, obviously, but he pays attention to the commercials. You with kids know that's what sucks because they start asking for everything. So one of the commercials that he sees on this Disney Channel, Disney Junior, and all that type of stuff is a commercial for Chuck E. Cheese's. See where this is going? He's been asking to go to Chuck E. Cheese's. So, oh, 
this brush. It's so hard to clean too, this brush. So anyways, we decided I had to pull up the map and I just type it in and I'm like, I turn my wife and I'm like, let's do something else. I find out that Chuck E. Cheese's is five minutes away. There's one there. So we went. Oh my gosh. He had so much fun. So much fun. It was worth it. And their new pricing structure, from what I remember, and granted, I remember just going as a kid, but you pay for time now. So they give you a card, and you we paid for 30 minutes, and then they gave us like five minutes free or something, so we paid for 35 minutes. We didn't do anything crazy, because we knew it was getting close to nap time for my daughter, so we needed to just get there and get this done and you know do the experience and leave. It was just short notice. So we didn't spend a lot of time there. We didn't get food there because we'd already eaten. So um, I do 30 minutes, get five minutes for free, cost $12. That's it. They give you a card. And basically for that 35 minutes, you scan the card on any game that you want to play and it's covered. So you don't have to buy a certain amount of tokens and when your tokens are gone, they're gone. No, you can play as many games as you want for the amount of time that you put on that card. That was perfect. Played some air hockey, he rode some of the little kitty rides that Chuck E. Cheese's has, he won some tickets, he picked some prizes. It was perfect. Perfect for kids. So, I don't remember Chuck E. Cheese's being that way. I remember you had to go in, you had to get like a roll of tokens and you would go to a birthday party as a kid or something like that. And then you'd give every kid a roll of tokens, I remember with my niece's birthday parties and stuff. And then you'd run around and that's what you did. And then when your tokens were gone, well, you just went and sat at the table and pouted while your friends who were better with their tokens didn't spend them as fast. So, but I think it's a better approach because if you were going to a birthday party or something like that, you could give everybody a 30 minute card. Everybody's got 30 minutes. Nobody's gonna finish first type of a thing. When the time's up, the time's up. It's a great idea. I'm going to finish with uh, Clubman Whiskey Woods. Great scent out of the three new Clubman, the, well, yeah, three new Club. no, four. No, three, Gents Gin, Brandy Spice, and Whiskey Woods, sorry, I've got them down there. The Whiskey Woods ones is my favorite. Brandy Spice is a close second, the Gents Gin is third. I still only have these little sampler bottles. Um, I need to buy the bigger bottles, but I bought the small ones to start just to see what I thought. And to be honest with you, I could end up buying all three. I mean, I have a favorite, but I uh, love it. So that's my shave for today. I'm sorry this is a little bit of a longer video. Um, I had some things I wanted to talk about. Um, what's coming up on the forum this week? You guys pay attention. Bingo starting. If you haven't signed up yet, you can still sign up. Bingo is a lot of fun on the forum, and it's a great way to do it. I handed the reins over to our monkey. Yeah, our monkey. And um, the, the dummy account, so to speak. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. Um, he hasn't had the reins in a bingo game for a while for good reason. But I learned everything from him. So if I win this and I get to call the game next, get ready. Um, but anyways, it should be a lot of fun, so sign up and play. The site is still growing. We've added a couple members even over the weekend. Our site traffic is up like crazy, which is fantastic. The topics are crazy. Even though I was away for most of the day yesterday, I couldn't even get caught up. I'm going to have to sit down and pull up my laptop sometime today. I can't do it on my phone. There are too many topics to go around. It's fantastic, guys. Thank you for building up the, the TSC to what it is now and what it's going to become. It is awesome. This is not our site. This is not Dave, Chris, and my site. This is our site. This is what we make it. We, we might be the guys behind it pushing the buttons to help keep it up, but it's, it's up to you guys to come together as a community that we have, already have, and to can keep it going. It is amazing to me. Um, and you guys deserve a lot of the credit for it. So thank you, um, guys, for that. I really appreciate it. So, that's my shave. If you haven't joined us, you're missing out. Come to www.theshavingcadre.com. Sign up. The membership is free. The banter is endless. And it's a lot of fun to join in on. 
A um, lot of great topics going around right now, so please come and join us. And I hope you all have a great Sunday. Enjoy, Kadre.